Hi everyone, Kelvin from London here. Stereo View X, I review vintage stereo equipment, mostly but also new equipment. Today I'm going to do this thing of looking at vintage speakers, trying to work out or trying to give you information about what things sound like, how you can tell what they're going to sound like and how old they are, just tips on what to look for and what kind of sound you're going to get out of things. And you can tell actually quite a lot literally just by looking at things you know uh, okay so i'll quickly go through these speakers and then we're going to go through in fact i'll just start on the first one and i'll bring the camera in in a minute and get you a close look but uh, let's just go straight into it so these are sort of progressing in age here 68 72 77 89 83 90 yeah and there's all sorts of things change slowly over time you know cabinets and drivers now okay let's have a look at this one bovox 1500 that's bang and olufsen yeah they call their speakers bovox i know a lot of people don't rate bang and olufsen but they use nice gear i know and sometimes they go these things used to go so cheap anyway what can we learn or what does this thing sound like well first thing to notice you know we've got all paper cones yeah you know, that tells you it's quite old. Nine times out of ten, a paper tweeter is an, it tells, you, tells you it's old. Not necessarily paper base driver. But a paper tweeter will age it, you know, most times, yeah? Now, I've been listening to these speakers just recently. A paper tweeter, let's just do this, for instance. You know when someone does this... Bass drum and cymbal, you get this nice decay, very nice decay into space, you know, very... That's what that paper <laughs> tweeter doesn't do super well. That... Will it be a, a little bit uh, halting? It just won't do that super smoothly, you know? You know, the dome tweeter took over from the paper cone tweeter because it's basically better, you know? Almost all tweeters now, you know, for years are dome tweeters. So that tells you something. All these, you know, what's interesting here, we've got three drivers. You've got a dedicated mid-range driver. All paper. You know, or, you know, this is what will, you know that when you look at this thing, it's going to be a lively sound. It's going to have a lot of detail. It will probably be a little bit on the the harsh, edgy, or attacking in the mid-range, because you've got a mid-range driver, and paper cones are very light and fast, yeah? But they're not super refined. So, you know, when I look at this speaker, I think we're gonna get a lot of mid-range activity, probably not a ton of bass, because this doesn't look too substantial, yeah? Doesn't look like it does huge movements hasn't got a very big magnet I know because I've looked so we're not going to get a ton of bass because that's not very big and it's going to be quite a sort of what could I say a, a bit of an edgy sound you need a real nice smooth luxurious sounding amp for these to sound good and they can sound okay and they've got a bit of life about them you know they've got a detail and fast moving things happen on these speakers with these three paper cones but uh it's not super refined yeah it's not a dome tweeter uh and it's not something that someone spent a ton of time designing you know it's a mainstream company churning out ranges every year nice drivers but not a ton of love gone into making this sound good but anyway so if you see paper cones paper tweet it it's an old speaker could be 65 you know most times what would you say dome started happening around 1970 roughly i mean everything i'm saying here is general yeah i can't pin it down to a year okay that's that one nice cabinet let's move on here bowers and wilkins dm4 1972 now Cones turned into Beckstream. This is Streen, like I think that's polystyrene and whatever Bex is, but it's like a plastic and polystyrene. Idea is 
it's light and it's rigid. It's not an, as light and fast moving as paper, I would say. So, you know, Beck Stream Cone, also Beck Stream Cone, kind of a bit fatter, a bit heavier, a bit, bit more base, but probably not such, you know, fine detail coming from that cone, yeah? Uh, okay, let's look at these two tweeters here now. I'll bring the camera in in a second, I'll, you'll see all these in detail. That's a Celestian uh, tweeter, HF1300, and a Cole Super Tweeter. You will see those two tweeters in various uh, B&W, uh, Bowers and Wilkins uh, speakers, IMF monitors, and you'll see that tweeter in a lot of uh, Celestian's own speakers. Those two together, really nice thing is if you see those two yeah if you see those two tweeters you can pretty much be sure they're going to sound the same similar than they do here you know tweeters have a characteristic and you can't destroy it by tweaking the crossover or what the other drivers are so for me if you see those tweeters i think that, that's going to be a real nice top end and I can pretty much say will be yeah so you know if you don't know that's a really good thing tweeters have sound qualities bass drivers have sound qualities they don't vary enormously by different companies using them or crossovers working them differently they have their own sound and if you, if you see that tweeter and you like that tweeter in that speaker then you see it in that one you're going to like it too, I'd say. And if you don't like it in that one, and it's in another one, you're probably not going to like it, you know, because it have its own characteristics. So, okay, this is basically, in case you don't know, those two are tweeters, tweeter and a super tweeter. Yeah, and a big speaker. And this is a lovely speaker, has a lovely mid-range, gorgeous mid-range. You know, this would sound creamy, classy, much more detailed than this. This is more like a bit of fun and excitement, and uh, but this would this would make this one seem is outclassed, really, just outclassed. <clears throat> okay, let's move on here. 1977 Monitor Audio MA4 Mark II. Under there, that's a silk dome tweeter. This is a plastic dome, plastic dome. Most of them are plastic. Silk drum tweeters just a bit more delicate, a bit more easy on the ear. Maybe it's definitely not harsh. I mean, just definitely not harsh. Um, I don't know. It's a bit more angelic. I don't know. It's softer. It's sweeter. Um, let's say a little thing about. I'll just show you a couple of tweeters here. Um, Beckstream cone. Oh, let me talk about this. Beckstream cone again. Yeah. This is a Kef driver. C's, I think this is. You will see that driver a lot in the 70s, but a lot of them are not all the same driver. This one has a big magnet, yeah? In fact, I'll show you the magnet. And there are other ones that look exactly the same and they have a smaller magnet. But that's a nice driver. If you see that driver, and you have to zoom in and make sure you've got the right one, it's called a B200. And it's got other delineations depending on the magnet size. But if you see that driver, you're in safe ground. One second. The magnet on this one is this big magnet from this Kef B139. This one. This is a gorgeous base driver, by the way. Um, but, you know, to know if you see that base driver in multiple different companies used it, it's probably pretty good. And you will often see it uh, accompanied by this T27. Yeah, lots of companies used Kef's drivers. You know, loads of companies just using everyone else's drivers. Most of them are not making their own drivers. But, uh, you know, T27... And this driver, you're on safe ground, yeah? Probably sounds pretty good. 
Now, interesting point to note, generally speaking, the closed box was more common in the early days. And as things went on, you know, right up to little speakers like this, the port gives extra bass, let's say that. It's a way of getting more bass out of small boxes. And closed boxes tend to have a punchier sound because they're using the acoustic suspension in the box to stop the bass driver moving. And it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of pulls it back harder. You get punchier bass, but not so deep. Generally speaking, generally ports go lower. And for me, a lot of it gets a bit softer. Modern speakers have got on top of port design and crossovers. And you can get fairly sort of uh, tight to base out of ports. But for a long time, I would say 80s, 90s, let's say, ports would generally, I would associate them with a softer base and a, and a bigger base because you're getting more base out of that uh, port. So that's for the port. So, okay, worth noting one, two, three. Nice, these are the older ones. Nice veneered wood boxes, probably veneered chipboard, maybe plywood. Gives a rigid box, it's good. So, you know, and their quality, you know, it's nice, you know, it's nice to look at. Whereas we get here to this 252, uh, I think this is a vinyl wrap. And you know, it's just a super thin, super thin veneer. And the box isn't so good. There's generally speaking, they're economizing on the quality of box making. Generally, generally. Now, I will bring the camera in a sec. Worth noting here, that tweeter, it's not a bad tweeter, yeah? Now, here is, I'll just see if you can see this. Uh, if you can see that, I don't need to, that's, that's the same tweeter. I've taken it out and looked at it from the back. It's got a different number, but everything else is the same. And uh, this one doesn't say C's, S-E-A-S, because they made it for Mission. They put Mission's name on it. But basically, it's a C's tweeter. It's quite a nice tweeter. If you see that in Mission speakers, I would say it's going to be quite nice. I'll bring the camera in a minute. It's, it, it's pretty damn sure it's exactly the same thing. Okay. This, monitor audio. This is a, a sort of bottom of the range-ish speaker, yeah? It's a closed box. It's not giving you a lot of bass because of that, yeah? But it has a paper cone, which means it's kind of lively in the mid-range, yeah? I mean, this, more than, even though this, this is nice, but, you know, this does have a recessed mid-range. Because you've got a big bass driver with a big magnet making a lot of bass and that is going to try and do some mid-range too and it's very difficult. They try, you know, they try to do things with a crossover to make this better but, you know, it's a little bit of a recessed mid-range. But this is quite a classy thing. I mean, I do like this thing. MA4 Mark II. Okay, keeping, keeping on. So yeah, paper cone, lively sound, nice tweeter, but not much bass, no port, and bit of a bit of a, a sort of a not well made box. Okay, now it gets interesting. So all these speakers here, you can kind of tell what they sound like by looking at them. Now, this Kenwood LPS five thousand. It's now, it's not lying, but it says here, two-way speaker system. Two-way, yeah? Well, I read that, and my brain was going, oh, no, that's three-way. You know, what's that saying, two-way? Bass driver, mid-range tweeters. It's the three-way, you know. But I unscrewed this bass driver, so to speak, to discover it's not a bass driver at all. No magnet, no wires. That is an auxiliary bass radiator. It vibrates in sympathy with this. When this, this is the woofer. 
when this is doing the bass, this augments the low bass by vibrating in sympathy with it. So this is not powered. So here's the thing, you look at them, you think you're probably going to get a ton of bass, yeah? Because you're looking at that. This is actually quite mostly mid-range orientated because yet this isn't powered you're not getting as much bass that's the driver that's not in a separate box by the way and you've got four tweeters so you, what you get with this speaker is this big really big mid-range very detailed not very accurate this is not a highly refined piece of kit do you know what i mean this is the kind of thing that's meant to impress you with size and all this stuff and you see this and it's got a you can adapt you can adjust uh, the tweeter high frequencies there you know that's not real hi-fi yeah i mean you know kenwood it's not a forgery uh you think it you know kenwood had a good name some of these companies did good things at some point and then I don't know, did they get sold? They went bankrupt, someone, another company got them and then kind of maybe exploited their historical uh, good name a bit, you know. So, but uh, you know, this is one where it's a bit deceptive. It's not really what it looks like. It's not bad and you can get them very cheaply. You know, they're not rated at all. And, you fed it with something nice, it would sound, it would be quite big. The mid-range would be huge, actually. But, uh, you know, it's not detailed, accurate. They haven't spent a lot of time on the crossover. They're the kabuki speakers, someone once called these. If you know that, it just means all show, you know. It's mostly show, yeah. Uh, very big, you know. Which is unusual, because uh, as time went on, 70s to 80s, I would say, 70s to 80s to 90s, the boxes generally got smaller because it would be cheaper to transport from foreign countries, you know. Gener generally speaking, the boxes got smaller. Uh, which leads us to that, the Rogers LS2A, which I just put there really of a sort of, ver you know, what went on later in time. Not a bad box, but, you know, no veneer, not very good looking. Now, that's got a metal dome tweeter, yeah? Metal dome tweeters came in, I'd say, late 70s, maybe even mid 70s. A lot of the early metal dome tweeters were too edgy, just brash, you know, at the beginning. I mean, there are metal dome tweeters now that are just fine. Still some of them, I would say, have, you know, you can kind of hear it's a metal dome tweeter. But, um, you know, this speaker, a heavy cone, uh, I don't know, this speaker really doesn't deliver. It's, you know, they've only got this little driver, it's not well engineered. Again, an example of, of a company once sort of highly rated, Rogers, you know, made really great stuff, you know, some, a few really great speakers. Um, I don't know, this thing just doesn't deliver. It wasn't. I don't know, it wasn't well thought out, you know. It's got a bright metal dome tweeter. I mean, that tweeter, once again, that tweeter, you will actually see this metal dome replaced by this in this model. At some point, they changed it for this. I'm not sure if it was came first or second, but that tweeter would just sound better than that metal dome tweeter. Because uh, to me, a lot of those early metal dome tweeters were just kind of brash. Um, okay, let me, uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm going to bring the camera in now, give you some close-ups. Okay, so let's have a look here. Those are Kef 105s, by the way. 1979, something like that down there. Here we go. So this is the Bang & Olufsen Bovox 1500, 1968. Paper, paper, paper. You know, that corrugated paper generally ages things to the sort of mid-60s. And a lot of bass drivers were oval in those times. Okay. 
And then let's have a look here. Here we go. Bowers and Wilkins DM4972. It's your Cole Super Tweeter. That's your Celestian Tweeter, which you'll see a lot of. That's actually a Dalesford base driver. And that's ported. And also inside here is actually lamb's wool. Yeah. So it's quite a classy thing. And then here, Monitor MO4. I think C's, S E A S, C S, whatever you call it. Silk Dome tweeter there. B200 139, SP139 base driver. That's the big magnet ported. Uh, there's your monitor audio, R252. I mean, I don't particularly like this speaker. I like this one. I like this one. I kind of don't mind this one because at least it's a bit lively. Uh, this is a bit too not hitting the mark for me, but I'll just show you this tweeter. So there you go. You know, that's the mission tweeter. And that's the, uh, you know, that, that will say, this will say C's on the back of it. And a paper comb. And uh, also I've got down here, that's a close up, you can get that. That's the T27, which you'll often see. Let's just I'll stick there. You'll often see that T27 next to that Kef base driver. They're both Kef. <coughs> okay, let's have a look at this uh, slightly fraudulent thing. Kenwood SP, LSP 5000, 1983. Paper cone. That keeps that mid-range lively. Four cone tweeters, and then this big thing, which is an auxiliary base radiator, not a base driver. And there's a quick look at the Rogers LS2A, not to be confused with the LS35A. I really don't like these speakers, I don't mind telling you. They don't do anything good, you know, they just don't deliver anything nice. Um, yeah, okay, so let's have a quick one round. So, I hope that's helpful. I mean, if you're looking for vintage speakers, you won't go wrong if you look for, say, the big names Kef, Celestian, Bowers and Wilkins, uh, Monitor Audio, particularly that MA range. Uh, what else can you have? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of other sort of lesser ones. Mission were nice. Wharfdale, not too bad. You know, things tend to break quite a lot on Wharfdales, particularly the tweeters, particularly the blue ones, the tweeters. Uh, you know, I Wharfdale never really... I think they were quite good early on. They were kind of ahead of the game, late 60s. Uh, but into the 70s... You know, I, I think they just got over, they just got superseded, to be honest. I mean, some of their stuff got a bit too cheap. I mean, they're different to nowadays. I'm not talking about nowadays. Uh, and, you know, you've got to know by looking at it, big bass driver will give you a lot of bass. If you, for instance, had a great big bass driver and one tweeter, if you see something like that, which you do sometimes, you're going to know that's a lot of bass. Tweeter, the mid-range is going to be a bit neglected. Or the mid-range is going to be sort of bigger than it should be. The voices will be sort of big, chesty. Snare drums will be bigger and deeper, you know. So, you know, you can tell when things, what things are going to sound like. And if things have like uh, smaller cones, that's more, it's going to be more mid-range orientated and more likely less bass orientated, you know that's going to give me more bass than that one, yeah? And that's going to give me more bass than that because that hasn't got a very big magnet and it's just kind of, I don't know, the material, they hadn't, they weren't most times dishing out a lot of bass with these and this hasn't got a port. Uh, and look at tweeters, tweeters sound certain ways. If it's a good tweeter, it will sound good more or less every time you see it. And if it's a bad tweeter, it's not going to be good if it's in a, another speaker, even if it's a thousand pounds more 
it's still the same tweeter. It's not going to revolutionise itself because it's in a, a different uh, box, you know, or even a different, surrounded by different units. It's got its own sound characteristics. That's the thing. All drivers have their own sound characteristics. They can't be rev changed in big ways, you know. They're always going to sound quite a lot like what they are. They're paper, they're fast. If they're these backstream ones, they get a bit slow. Unless you get that as a mid-range, like a four-inch one, backstream, then it sounds nice because it's quicker and it's got more magnet uh, in relation to the weight of it, you know? Uh, okay, that's it. Um, I hope that's helpful. I mean, just do, do a bit of homework when you're buying speakers on eBay. And when you look on eBay, to get a bargain nowadays, you have to spend a bit of time, you know. You can't just rock up and go, I want some of these, because you'll find someone wants £400 for them. But if you wait and watch the auctions and spend a bit of time on it, be a bit clever, you, know, you might uh, find, you know, there's a pair, they're 50 miles away, they're going for 150 quid. Now I'm gonna get them in an auction, you know, something like this. You kind of have to spend time hunting things out because it's getting harder and harder uh, as time goes on. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Bye for now.